Hey, what is up guys? Welcome back to another YouTube video at the World of AI. In today's video, I'm going to be showcasing another project that is similar to DrawGen. But in this case, you're styling an image using StyleGen. Now, this project is called User Controllable LT. Now, the LT stands for Latent Transformer, and it's a model that is based off of StyleGen architecture. Now, for the people who do not know, StyleGen is a generative model that can create realistic images by learning the underlying structure of a given dataset and generating new samples based off of the structure. Now, it has been widely used in various applications, including image synthesis, as well as manipulation of a certain type of image. Now, User Controllable LT extends its capabilities of StyleGen by introducing a latent transformer transformer component. Now this latent transformer allows users to control specific attributes or features of a generative image by manipulating the latent vectors, which can basically interpret as well as work with different types of inputs of an image to generate networks correlated to style again. Now, the primary objective of user controllable LT is to provide users with a user-friendly interface to modify specific characteristics of a generative image. And this is obviously achieved by leveraging the actual representation of the latent space of style again. Now, in this representation, different factors of variations in the data are encoded into separate dimensions of the latent space. And by manipulating the latent vector, users can actually control as well as work with various aspects of a generative image such as like the pose expression or appearance of a person's face or maybe the style of an object or the background for an example now in this case we can see in this demo video you can play around with the cat as well as the style and the pose of how the cat is represented and this is one of the main features of how you can style and play around with the manipulation factor or feature sorry in this new feature uh, or this application of user controllable lt and in today's video we're actually going to be playing around with this on hugging face as they have uploaded the demo on this interface so that we're, we're going to be able to play around with it change around the style of the image and we can also even upload our own and this is something that we're going to be checking out later on in the video i'll leave all the links in the description below we're going to take a deeper look at to to see some of the features as well as how you can actually install it onto your local desktop but before we actually move on to that step guys it would mean the whole world to me if you guys can go actually follow this twitter page if you guys haven't already i post the latest ai news over here so that you can get updated for the latest content and stay up to date in the ai world now if you guys haven't subscribed it mean the whole world to me guys if you guys can do so there's a lot of content and a lot of value that you will definitely benefit from as i'm continuously posting like different features as well as different topics in the ai world that will definitely benefit you guys so i highly recommend that you do so and if you guys haven't liked this video, please do so. If you have, haven't seen any of my previous videos, I would highly recommend that you do so because there's a lot of content that you will definitely benefit from. And with that thought, guys, let's get right into the video. Now, let's actually get in more depth to how this actual application operates. And this is by looking at the pipeline as well as the flowchart of this application. Now, this pipeline begins with the user-friendly direction of annotating an image and that is represented and generated by utilizing style again and basically it uses the initial latent codes to help you do so and these annotations serve as a user's instruction for modifying specific attributes of the feature of the image now the next step involves the latent transformer and this is where it takes the annotations the initial latent code and the style again features into mapping the inputs and basically from this the latent transformers purpose is to compute the output latent codes based off of the inputs that were given now the output latent codes are computed by the latent transformer which are then fed back to StyleGAN. Now by using the modified latent codes as an input, what StyleGAN does is that it generates an edited image that reflects the desired changes upon the actual user's annotation that was given initially. And this is how the actual pipeline is actually able to operate and you're able to get a better understanding of how it's able to function. In this figure, we can see that it presents the network architecture of two components in the user controllable LT model. The first one is the latent transformer and the second one is the transformer encoder decoder. Now on the left side of the figure, we can see it is the latent transformer. And this takes as a motion vector feature 
sequence and basically it utilizes style GAN features which are obtained from a position sequence as an input. And the purpose of this latent transformer is to process these inputs and produce a latent direction that aligns with the user's input. Now on the right hand side, we're able to see that you can see the depiction of the transformer encoder decoder. Now that is a tongue tester, so it's kind of hard to say, but this is the encoder decoder and the transformer encoder receives a motion vector feature which sequences and uh, utilizes style GAN features to extract it using a position sequence. Now this might sound a little complicated, but basically the transformer decoder takes the output of a transformer encoder and the latent code feature sequence, which is combined with the positioning and embedding. And through this, the transformer decodes and generates the latent direction that corresponds to the user's input and in giving you the actual output of a certain type of image of or what you really want. In this figure, it illustrates the training pipeline of the latent transformer in the user controllable LC model. Firstly, it works upon the initial latent code sampling, and this is the initial step where the latent codes are sampled from the normal distribution, and those latent codes serve as a starting point for the training process. Secondly, it focuses on the latent code, and this is basically sampling the latent codes that are further uh, preturbed or modified to introduce different types of variations and this helps the exploration in different regions of the latent space during this training thirdly it focuses on the optical flow estimation and basically in this step the, uh, there is an optimal flow network that is employed to estimate the forward flow field between the images that are generated as well as from the initial latent codes and this is what helps to represent the motion or the transformation between the generative image which we can see over here you have that transformation whenever you're trying to move the points and the fourth step is where the subsampled forward flows are utilized and this is from the estimated forward flow field and as well as from the subsampled for fields that are obtained. Now, these subsampled flows capture the important motions as well as the information that are necessary for the latent transformers. Nextly, we're given to the next step, which is the estimated edited latent codes, which is using the subsampled forward flows, initial latent codes, and the style GAN feature map. And this is what helps edit the latent codes that represent the desired modifications or the transformations specified by the user. With any project, there's going to be actual limitations and risks and failures. But something that we can know for this project is that the quality and realism of the generative images heavily depend on the underlying style GAN model and the quality of the training data that is used. And basically, if the style GAN model was not adequately trained or training data lacks the diversity or the quality, it can then result into limitations such as the generation being wacky or the artifacts of certain images are misplaced or there's an unrealistic output and this is what is caused like because of the style GAN's architecture not having the adequate training as well as the required data sets that are required to give you the diversity and quality to generate the output and this is one of the main limitations of this project but there's ways that you can combat this and this is something that they're going to be continuously working towards fixing in the future updates. Now let's get to the next focus where we're going to actually take a look at the demo and you can actually access this for free and they've actually selected a couple pre-trained models. They have anime, car, cat, church, and FFHQ. I do not know what that one is, but let's not play around with that. Let's go to anime and once you have that loaded up, I'll be right back. So I ended up selecting the anime pre-trained model and now you can actually drag it around and play around with this model you're able to style it in a different way and you can even play around with the small by clicking on it and dragging the points obviously in this one i don't think you can do it perfectly but you're able to do that with the actual human face but this is something that they're continuously working on adding and deploying sooner or later but you can see that you, if you can drag it in a certain way you can get a different type of pose as well as a different type of generative image now if you go to a car you can randomly sample it reset the actual pointers if i twirl it around you can see that it's going to start twirling it and changing the position of the car now you can also play around with the zoom in this case you can even go further in and get a further zoom and scope of the car 
now you can even go a little bit lower and you can get a more zoomed in feature of the car obviously you're not going to be able to get the best quality with this feature because it's very very hard to get you the best quality when you're doing things with this architecture you can even play around with like you can even sample it differently change the style uh, in this case you can change the style of the actual image in this case i want to stay uh change the style and it will actually zoom into the cat now if i want to play with the church you can even give yourself a random sample you can have it further away or you can have it at the pre-time uh, zoom of like i think it was zero but basically you can even play around with it get a better generative church sample it to another one you can even zoom around with it double click it so that you can play around with it so have it saved in that certain motion and you can even play around with the FFHQ which I believe is the human one you can change the smile add a different type of focus to it I think this one if you drag it up it's turning into a little kid which is kind of funny if you go this way it's another type of person with long hair this one turns into a baby never mind and every time I go to the corners it turns different which is, this is awesome guys because you can play around with so many different types of like samples and you can even upload your own face so this is something that's also kind of amazing in this case I have Obama here let's see what we can do okay that looks kind of a little weird but we can see what you can actually do with this and basically that's one of the main features of this amazing application guys this is an amazing tool that could be used for a lot of different things and with this architecture it's going to enable users to control specific attributes of generative image and this could be quite useful for a lot of use cases so i definitely recommend that you check this out guys it will be quite useful for a lot of people who are playing around with generative images so i highly recommend that you check this out i'll leave all the links in the description below in terms of installation i'll leave the link for the repo below i know i said i was going to talk about it but I don't think I'll have enough time to actually speak upon it. So if you really want me to make a new video on this, I can highlight it on my Twitter page and show you guys how to install it. But with that thought, guys, thank you so much for watching. It really means a lot. Make sure you give this a follow. If you guys haven't subscribed already, please do so. Turn on the notification bell, and I'll see you guys very shortly. Peace out, fellas. Have an amazing day. Spread positivity, and I'll see you guys soon.